And I'd like to introduce uh, Marie Morgan. Marie is a dental therapist and she's also a lecturer in, in dental hygiene at uh, Bangor University. Going to have a good um, oral health overview today. Um, so a little bit a little bit about me before we start, so it's just where you, you've got an idea of where I'm coming from. So um, I qualified from Cardiff Dental School and I've worked all over Wales um, and I am the British Association of Dental Therapists um, representative in Wales. Um, but it also means that I go all over the country with them um, um, and, and, and we, we, we discuss in the council problems that there are all over the country. Um, and I still have a hand in um, surgery uh, every now and again, um, but my main role is a, 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 as a lecturer in Bangor University. Um, you may not have heard of a dental therapist before. Some of you may, some of you may have seen us and we've been around a long time, um, but you're going to start seeing us more regularly now. So um, we do everything. A, you might be familiar with a dental hygienist who does the, the cleaning and looking after the gums. Um, so we do everything that they do, but then we also do um, all the treatments on children, extractions and, and um, everything like that. Um, and we also do adult fillings as well. We just don't do the dentures and the root canals and things like that. Um, but there's been some legislation change and you may see us um, more uh, in the future, but I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that in a little bit. So the aims of today's session is, um, and I, you know, I want to preface this by saying I'm not a Huntington's disease e um, expert um, in any way, um, but what I do have is an understanding of how the symptoms um, and the medications associated with Huntington's disease Huntington's disease um, will impact on the oral health of of, of your family. So um, it's just to help you develop an understanding of what a healthy mouth should look like understand how Huntington's disease um, will impact that oral health um, give you some advice on how you can prevent these oral diseases and to help you um, demystify all of the products that are available um, for oral care. So before I go any further, um, I realised that I, you know, I was looking for some pictures and things to put in to, to help understanding. Um, and I realised that I look at this stuff day in, day out. Um, and, uh, you know, you kind of become a little bit desensitised to it. And then somebody will say something like, oh, God, I can't do your, I couldn't do your job. Oh, don't you find it um, horrible? Um, so just to say there are some images there that, that um, of, of oral diseases that may be a little bit alarming for people when you first see them. If you think it's going to have a negative impact on you and you'd rather not see that, then, you know, I won't be offended if, if you if you drop off um, now. Um, but yeah, just just so you have that uh, the ability to do that now. So. We have uh, so just first of all, starting off with a healthy mouth, um, you know, I'd say this is a supermodel of a mouth. This is the Rolls Royce of mouths here. Um, a lot of dental professionals' mouths won't look like this. So don't worry if your mouth doesn't look like it. This is probably more than likely healthy. It's just that this has got everything. So if we start from the outside here, there's no, you know, nice smooth skin, no blemishes or anything. When I'm looking at a patient coming into my surgery, that's what I'm looking at at first. You know, uninterrupted border of the lips there, you no know, cracking at the sides here nice pink colour um, to the tissues, um, you know, that gentle pink colour, not too red, uniform in colour, um, you know, the tongue looks nice and sort of wet, it's not too dry, it's not too wet as well, there's no frothy um, saliva there making me think they've got a dry mouth, um, you know, the nice um, uniform colour in, in their teeth, um, you know, there's no cavities there, the enamel's nice and shiny, um, and, um, you know, you can be in health and have restorations and things there, definitely. Um, uh, but but it's, it's um, you know, this, this person obviously hasn't had to have any treatment then at all. And then we also have, um, if we look at the gums here in particular, um, how they come in nice, sharp um, points in between the teeth here. So that to me is indicating those gums are nice and healthy. There's no inflammation there um, and they've probably got a good handle on their um, 
oral health. So if we compare that then um, to this gentleman, um, and we can see straight away the, the redness here, you know, it looks quite inflamed and, and quite angry, doesn't it? Um, you know, you can see those stiff peaks have gone. It's much more rounded there now. Um, the, you know, this uh, gum line should actually be up here. There's some um, gum disease going on there. And this build up here is just bacteria that's been left behind and it hardens on and it becomes calculus um, or, or tata you may have heard of. Um, and, and that will have an implication on um on it having inflammation there. So we've got that redness and swelling. There's some ulceration towards the back and more buildup. And um, here, that frothy um, appearance to their saliva makes me think they've got a bit of a dry mouth. That looks like it's irritated their tongue. Um, can't quite see the corners of their mouth here, but they look a bit red. Um, that can be an impact as well. Um, and then um, we, we have, you know, some decay present and um, there's a lot of um, erosion. If you can see that, you know, they look at these teeth, uh, not just their colour, that's, you know, that can be from staining from food and things like that. But actually the shape of them, um, you know, they're, they're much more sort of blunt, aren't they? The, the, those sort of cusps and those kind of if we go back to you know these rounded edges are completely gone from these teeth um so that's a bit of erosion there's big cavities here and then there's also dental work there that's been um, not well maintained um so th that's also having an impact on things um so except for the um, dry mouth, which comes with medication and, and, and other things, but everything else here is, is preventable. There's something we could have done at home to make sure that it doesn't happen to our family. Um, so the, the whole purpose of today is, is hopefully to get you understanding what you can do a little bit more so that that doesn't happen. Um, and, and because, you know, at later stages um, of Huntington's, this becomes very, very hard to treat, doesn't it? Rather than, and it, and it might end up with um, our family having to have extractions rather than having a filling. Um, you know, that, that impacts on their eating, um, on their speech even more that, than the disease would have by itself. So um, if, if hopefully by the end of today, you'll have a, a little bit of a, an idea what they, you should be doing at home um, to, to prevent um, this kind of picture. So if we go through sort of some of the, the symptoms that come with Huntington's uh, for the mouth, um, so that poor oral hygiene um, tends to be a factor. Um, you know, the, the impaired motor skills means that our family aren't able to um, clean them the way they want to. It's quite um, a dexterous skill. Um, you've got to be really good at getting into all the little corners in order to maintain absolute health here. So that can be very, very difficult for when the, those impaired motor skills um, there. It's also, you know, my patients who, um, you know, they, they're not dealing with degenerative diseases. They find it really, they struggle to do it twice a day. Um, it's boring, it takes too long, it's messy. So consider, you know, um, if that's a healthy person, a person dealing with apathy and, and, and depressive illness is going to find it 10 times harder to do. Um, but it's so important that we do actually get this done twice a day. So ideally, when um, the, the, the best time to do this brushing is at night, um, and um, it, it's the best one right before going to bed when nothing else is going to go into that mouth. Um, and then one other time of, of the day, if your family member doesn't um, doesn't like doing things when they get up in the morning, that's fine. You can leave it to later on. Um, but this poor oral hygiene, leaving this bacteria behind can lead to um, <clears throat> gingivitis. So that's um, inflammation in the gum. So you can see this person here that redness and then as I was saying before that bulbous um you know that loss of that nice stiff peak that's inflammation caused by this bacteria left behind 
that bacteria then you know once it's inflamed the gum and the gum's been inflamed for a long time it can move on then um to start destroying the ligaments attaching the gum to the tooth and and also the bone that keeps that tooth in place that's periodontitis gum disease um, and and you can lo- actually lose teeth then if this bacteria is left to do its job um also that bacteria you know it's it's live it's causing it's got waste products and that waste product is acidic and if it's left there long enough it can contribute um to tooth decay um and exacerbate it and so you end up with with cavities which can be painful um you know um, and and difficult for um your family to 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 describe to you as well um there's also the risk of aspiration um because this is bacteria there's some inert bacteria in there but there's live bacteria in there as well um you know if the if the pieces are getting cut um, you know um brushed off um and um it, it's loose can easily get aspirated and cause that aspiration pneumonia then so if we can keep this bacteria level down um it means that we're avoiding a whole host of other issues and that's just that is all you have to do to prevent this, all these issues here, is is brushing twice a day, um, but doing a good job of it. So it'll come on to you know to to what we can use to to do a good job of it a little bit later on. Um, another um you know factor in in Huntington's and and for the for the oral cavity is dry mouth. Um, so a number of medications can cause um, dry mouth as xerostomia um, in my world. Um, uh, so the, a lot of the antidepressants medication, um, a side effect of them um, will be dry mouth. Um, and then in later stages um, of Huntington's disease, when you have that um, persistent open mouth posture, your, the, 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 your family member will be breathing out um you know the, the moisture in their mouth and it's not being kept in that oral cavity so it dries out by itself as well and you know other than you wouldn't i think hopefully after today you'll realize what impact that has um you know initially you just kind of think oh it's just a bit dry have a bit of water and it'll be fine but actually it goes further than that so those soft tissues will start sticking together and that makes eating and chewing and swallowing very very difficult it's very uncomfortable as well um and you know if they're struggling with their motor skills as well it's making that even more difficult within the mouth um you can have some burning sensation that goes with this as well um cracked lips um because they're so dry and there's not that moisture there to keep them moisturized um so it's very hard for these cracked lips to heal an altered taste sensation as well so that saliva there's enzymes within the saliva that start the breakdown of food and that's how we taste our food initially is because it's actually starting to be digested in our mouth without the saliva being there it's very very reduced so if you're thinking of your family member if they're if they're struggling with their appetite um this isn't helping things because they're actually not tasting um what what um what they've been given as well um so so that will have an impact um that difficulty swallowing because everything's much drier going down uh, you know on top of the uh, dysphagia dysphagia um uh, it, it, it makes it even more difficult and then the, the sort of further impact of that then is our saliva has a buffering capacity so it because we have saliva that washes around their mouth it washes away any debris you know it takes away the food if you're thinking about something like um chocolate you know once you've eaten some chocolate it leaves a kind of film around your mouth but after you know for us 10 30 minutes it's gone but with somebody with a dry mouth, it can still be there hours later, meaning that sugar's still there. Um, but also the the pH level of the mouth, the acidity level of the mouth isn't coming back to normal. So it can cause um, these um, quite aggressive decay. This can happen much, much quicker in a patient with dry mouth um, than it does Um for somebody with a normal salivary flow rate um, and you know with decay comes pain um, as well so ulceration is another factor 
Um, what I'd say here is I've once given a, a whole hour lecture on um, different types of um, tooth staining. Um, I could give a week lecture on different types of um, ulcerations. So what I'd say is seek professional help. If you're seeing these in, in your family's mouth, then you need to seek some advice. Go and see the the, the dentist, the hygienist, the therapist, um, so that you can they can be dealt with appropriately. There's kind of one little caveat I'd put to that is that um, you know, because of um the the dys dysmetria, um they can cause some trauma, you know, whether it be with with utensils for eating or um with the toothbrush. Um you know, and that can cause ulceration and um, tends to be at, at the lips or, um, you know, maybe down by the side of um, less, um, less than this is less likely with, with toothbrush tra trauma, but more on the side or right of the gum or down here in that sulcus. That's where they tend to happen. But if, if you're 100 percent sure that that's what's happened, I mean, you've seen that it happen, then you don't need to take them to, to the to the dentist but every other also you know they may resolve in two weeks it might be a viral thing and it revolves in two weeks or um you know you start seeing healing and you think oh it's fine the problem is with something like this one they could have, be having choreic movements of, of the tongue of the lips of the cheeks which means that mm. this person's tongue has been rubbing against um, you know, a, a, a hard cusp like that, and it's caused an, a, an irritant and, and broken down those tissues and caused an ulcer, which is, you know, in itself, not a huge problem, it'll heal, go away. But if it keeps happening, um, these cells are more likely to, to divide and become problematic. So it's really important that they get seen regularly by a dental professional to rule out, yes, we're happy for that one to heal and to go away, or do you know what? Yes, that tooth is a little bit sharp. Let's smooth that off a little bit and hopefully this won't happen anymore. So there's, you know, um, don't try and manage something like this at home yourself. Um, we also have um, oral thrush, so oral candidas. And, you know, this can be caused by a myriad of things. So um, it can come with nutrition problems. Um, saliva dysfunction um, will allow this yeast infection to, to grow sort of out of hand. Um, presence of dentures, especially if a denture gets left in. It's really important for, um, and I think we as a as dental professional are quite bad at telling you, you know, we'll we'll make the dent for for you and and give it to you, and then you go home, and we don't ever tell you how you should be sort of looking after it. Um, so you, it's not something that you should be wearing twenty four hours a day. Your soft tissues need rest from dentures. So if you know. Whether if you're not using them, if you're not out and about, if you're at home, I'd say have them out definitely at night. Um, but because it's a um, nice, wet, warm, sheltered area underneath that denture, the um, the yeast can go um, mad and start causing um, a thrush infection. It won't look like this um, underneath the denture. It'll be more red and it looks like a, a stamp mark of the denture. Um, and it won't be pain, painful either. It can be asymptomatic um, for, 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 for denture um, candidates. But um, this person here has more than likely had um, antibiotics. Um, and that interrupts the, the flora of the mouth. So the balance of the good and the bad bacteria um and so without that balance there things like yeast can go mad and they grow out of control and 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 you get um a presentation as this thick biofilm um that you know um yeah can be asymptomatic this patient might not know they've got it you can have localized pain especially in areas like this <clears throat> where it's um you know starting to ulcerate it's got erythematous it's red um uh, you can get cracking at the corners of the mouth. So if that yeast comes to the corner of the mouth, you get what we call angular colitis. Um, it, they tend to weep, they crack, they're very hard um, to heal. And at that point, you probably need to see um, a, a, a professional to get um, some antifungal cream 
for the corners of the mouth it needs to be keep kept nice and dry. Um, but it can also contribute to that dysphagia in another way. So if you have this oropharyngeal um, candidate, 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 and I, I, it's candidates and, and thrush we say every day. So, um, but um, so that can actually dry out the the mucosa, and make it very difficult to swallow um, as well. So the important thing is preventing us getting to that stage. That is the main thing. Um, and it, and it's, you know, it, it's not that complicated. It's easy we, easy to think that, uh, you know, how are you meant to do it all when there's so many options out there? But really, these are the, the, the three key things, really. Um, so fluoride is, is very, very important. So your regular um, fluoride toothpaste will have um, 1,450 parts per million fluoride. And that's fine for the majority of people. But there are other people, especially with dry mouth, or if, um, you know, they've got um, their intake of sugar is quite frequent, um, they will need a higher dose of, of fluoride. So um, those are prescribed by the dentist, um, by hygienists and therapists as well. Um, and those will be... Um, it, 2,800 parts per million and 5,000 parts per million toothpastes. Um, and it helps um, to prevent that decay. The problem with these, uh, there's only one company, it's only Colgate that make them. And um, th they're, they're not low foaming toothpaste. Unfortunately, they contain an ingredient, which means they foam up. Um, so they may not be appropriate for, for your family member at that point. But not to worry, Um we can apply fluoride in other ways. So we can provide this fluoride varnish. Um, so again, this is provided by the um, hygienist, therapist, dentist, by your dental practitioner um, at um, at your dental appointment. Um, and this lasts, it's quite, um, it's quite a viscous fluid. It dries quickly. And so that aspiration risk isn't there as the same. And it lasts three months. It doesn't mean you don't have to use toothpaste for three months. It just means that it, it, it's a low releasing fluoride um, for those three months. And you can use, a, a, you know, a normal toothpaste, um, a low foaming toothpaste to help with that. Um, um, and then um, diet is important. So um, reducing the frequencies of our, uh, of our sugars. So um, making sure that um, that person with a dry mouth is going to be reaching for a drink all the time. Well, just making sure that, you know, easy win would be making sure that's water. It's not a juice. It's not a fizzy drink. Um, that, that'll that have a big impact. Um, if they're snacking, there's better snacks than others to be had. Um, so just making sure that they're the low sugar versions. Um is the important thing. And then keeping an eye on the nutrition as well. So many reasons for the ulcers, um, so many reasons uh, for breakdown of the oral tissues, um, gum disease, they're all exacerbated by not having um, the correct nutrition, not having enough of the right vitamins. So keeping an eye on that, are they having enough um, of everything? Um, do we need to consider supplements as well? And then the main thing is, you know, you're not after a, an hour with me you're not going to be um dental professionals unfortunately i wish it was that easy um but it, you know it, you're not in it alone make sure you're getting regular dental visits make sure that somebody's looking at it all the time so um the way a lot of nhs practices do it these days is you'll see a dentist maybe once a year and they'll assess your risk and they'll say, no, do you know what? There's a risk of gum disease here. There's a risk of um, tooth decay. Um, they've got a dry mouth. Um, there's high risk of potentially oral cancers as well. I want this patient to be seen more regularly. So then they will send you to somebody like me or a, or a dental hygienist who will see you every three months. Um, and during that visit, you know, we might do a little clean. We might do, uh, we might spot any fillings that need doing and do that treatment. We'll provide this fluoride treatment. But the one thing we do, every dental professional does when they see you 
is we do an oral cancer check. Um, you won't be aware of us doing it. It takes us 30 seconds because we do, we're so used to doing it. But at least then you know that risk has been checked. Um, so, yeah, making sure that um, we're seeing every three months just to make sure if there is anything going astray, astray we're treating it at its most simplest, especially with the... Um, Correct movements, um, dental treatment can become very, very difficult to do. Um, and so if we can make it as minimal as possible, um, you know, prevent it or catch it as early as we can, um, that makes things a lot easier. So have you ever been in this position? You know, you're, you're in that um, oral hygiene aisle and you feel like the scream. Um, you know, there's just so much available what what are you meant to pick what's good for uh you know your condition what's good for other things um do you like the flavor of it there's so much you know it, 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 there's so much available and it's let's face it they're not cheap um so it's not like you can take a selection and and just you know not use the ones you didn't want they're quite expensive as well um, so to try and help with this, um, I've just picked out a few of the things that I thought would be very, very useful um, to alleviate some of the symptoms that we've talked about and, and, and prevent, um, you know, uh, any, any progression of the disease as well, uh, um, the oral disease. So toothpaste is really important. What I'd say is the most important thing is having this low foaming toothpaste. So that anything that doesn't contain SLS. So that's sodium lauryl sulfate. And what it is, is a detergent um, that gets put into most toothpastes to make it foam up. And you know that squeaky clean feeling that you get after brushing? Um, that's all fake. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a ruse. Um, it's pulling the wool over your eyes. All it is is soap that's gone in there detergent that's washed away um uh you know that it's changed the the um the constituency of your mouth so it feels nice and squeaky clean it doesn't do much else but that your toothpaste will work perfectly well for you without this sls um so um because that's foaming's not in there there's not that aspiration um risk that you get um from the foam uh, and it also they tend to be a milder taste to them um because it's a detergent as well it can actually um cause sloughing so it can take off the first protective layer of, of dead um, cells within your mouth and you can get like little you might have noticed it yourself with some toothpaste when you you know after you've brushed your teeth a few minutes later you'll have little bits of almost like skin in your mouth and that's sloughing and you know the aspiration um danger and the choking danger with that is 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 um you know quite extreme so i'd be um yeah pushing for it for an sle less free toothbrush uh toothpaste um some of the ones i like you know they, they they're, they're really good the non-foaming these ones will be free from artificial color colors and flavors remember i was saying earlier that we need um, a toothpaste with um 1450 parts per million it has this it, it you won't find one with the with the higher uh, concentrations in there um so just be just be careful that you have got one that's got adequate fluoride in as well um Companies are becoming much better at providing these. It used to be really hard to find them and you had to go to the chemist um, to find them. But now I know Oral-B have brought one out last year. Sensodyne's got one. Um, there's this one that, no, I'm not going to be able to see it if I put it here. Yeah, that um, TP do um, as well. They're a really good company and good place to get resources Um that are sort of different to what's on the supermarket shelves as well. Um, then there's the toothbrush. So the gold standard is an electric toothbrush, um, but it's not, you know, appropriate for everybody. It's not within the price point for everybody as well, they, they, although they are getting a lot better. So there are a few things that you can do to modify the toothbrushes. If it's a dexterity issue, um, then you know you can modify the toothbrush if somebody came in to me and said they're struggling to grip the handle 
I could there and then grab some of the silicone the dentist uses to make an impression of your teeth, uh, wrap that around the toothbrush and, it's, uh, and, and get the patient to grab onto it. So with the pressure so that it's comfortable, it's a grip made personally for them. The, the problem is <clears throat> in uh, two to three months time, when that head becomes very um, full of bacteria, the uh, bristles are, are splaying um, and it's time for a new toothbrush, um, this goes with it. Um, or you have to find the identical brush, which is very difficult. Um, so um, there's other things that can be done. You can heat up the the um, handle of the brush to get adequate angles. Uh, you know, all sorts of things being used from these this tennis ball. That's a hand, bike handle bar. This is a um, a roll on deodorant tub that's been cleaned out and that's being used. Um, and also, you know, some companies will make a, a, a brush with a chunky handle. Um, other th things I've seen used as well is, um, you know, those, um, the, the Americans call them pool noodles, don't they? They're like um, a, a, a floating, um, flotation device um, that's like a long piece of foam. Uh, for the swimming pool, um, you can cut off a little piece of that and put your brush in that, or um, plumbing insulation as well. Just drop down to B and Q and get some of that, and 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 make sure because there's different thicknesses of plumbing insulation you can get, um, that you know would help with um, modifying these um, handles. Um, but that only really helps with holding the the brush itself. Um, but we want you to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with your toothbrush in order to get rid of all that bacteria. So we want you to hold it at a 45 degree angles, have some of the bristles onto the tooth, some onto the um, gum itself. We want you to go all the way to the back. We want you to go to the front here where you're almost knocking yourself in your in your um in your nose with a with a toothbrush handle because it, it's there's some really tricky areas to get to. So that's where these um three-sided brushes come in they've got the angles there already um so if i show you um so they've got this little bit that comes for your biting surface and then these two see how they're angled up so that they actually get to the gum line because that's where the um that's where the bacteria will hide they don't tend to hide on the on the sort of flat edges because we, you know, when we're when we're chewing, um, just our lips and our soft tissues going over there, it's hard for the, the, the bacteria to stick there. But where the gum meets the tooth, that's the bit we need to brush the most. So these brushes are targeting those areas especially. Um, so it used to be just these kind of traditional um, in that picture there. It's the the smart brush um, that you could get. But again, you would need to modify this hand but these days you can get a um, an electric version of it as well so it's got a nice chunky handle um, and it's also got that benefit of being electric so um you can um you know um it it, it, it it does extra movements for you it does more accurate movements than we can do you know with the best will in the world i know brushing your teeth is boring and you know we might do a good job today after listening to this maybe or you know if we just after seeing the dentist or we, when you get that text saying that you your appointment is due you might do a really good job that day but you know on a day on a Monday morning you've had a long weekend and you've got all the week ahead of you and you just want to get through the week that's the time we don't do a good job but an electric toothbrush will do a really good job day in day out and um, it's just whether they can tolerate the the sensation of the of the vibration through the handle as well so there's options there um so that's a triple bristle that's the name of, of the the company for that one um and then there's also you know um for um family members who are having that thick um, mus mucus secretions um there could be you know having trouble clearing the food debris from around their mouths themselves um or that candidal bite so that thrush um build up that we were showing earlier um something like this the, so the mouth ease is, is this one uh, so it's a soft tissue brush um so 
actually a little bit better than your swabs or your sponge swabs as well. Um, because what they tend to do is once it gets on to that debris, it kind of breaks it off and then that becomes an um an aspiration um, risk and a choking risk as well. So because of the little um, silicone bristles on here, it gathers it as well. So you can gather everything. It cleans away the, the debris. It gathers it out. You can rinse it under the tap and go in for another one. Um, so um, to help with, with that, um, something like this would, would go a long way. Um, and then for the dry mouth, there's loads of stuff. Some people will just have sips of water and that helps them. Some people have um, a reduced saliva, saliva flow, but not, um, it's not, um, you know, completely dry. They'll just have a little bit of dryness and ch chewing sugar-free gum would be fine for those people if, if they're able to, if it's safe for them to do so. Um, as well, you can have these lozenges. So what happens when you chew or when you suck on something, your um, salivary glands, so your parotid glands and, and mandibular glands, um, so under the tongue, your main salivary glands will start to produce loads of saliva and, and sending it into your tissue to try and sort of, um, to try and um, start that digestion process in the mouth um and so stimulating that you're eating something with a chewing gum or with a lo lozenge will make the, the the salivary glands think you're trying to eat something and so um will stimulate them that way um with the lozenges it'll help that stimulation but it also there's there's a medicament in the lozenge itself that coats the um the mouth so it'll be leaving the mouth feeling a little bit nicer and slippier um a little bit more sort of slimy which is what we're used to with with normal saliva isn't it some people will have you know virtually no saliva at all that um picture we were showing earlier of the frothy saliva there's very little there um so they will need a substitute um, so they will need, um, you know, something like I, I really like this company. Um, they they're very good at giving out samples for for our patients to use, and they, um, you know, do a lot of work with patients rather than in in the um, in the lab. Um, doing what they think is best, they actually get a lot of feedback. So this or relief. Um, they've got a whole suite of things so they've got that moisturizing mouth gel and they've got a spray as well so depending on how your family member is doing um what's appropriate to them obviously there's a, that aspiration risk with with a spray but you can spray it you know into the cheek and just let it work its way around like that um the same with the gel or that can be applied you know all around um with something like that mouth ease um, and then they have the, the the toothpaste as well. What I really like as well, they have this alcohol-free, um, mild teeth thing, um, fluoride mouth rinse. So if there has been vomiting, um, or if they do need to eat regularly, or they have you know sugary solutions regularly, we need to help get rid of that out of the mouth. So if they're safe to use um, a mouthwash then this will help um, remineralize the teeth. Once there's sugar being introduced into the mouth, your teeth will start to soften a little bit. So the worst thing you could do is put a toothbrush in there because you could actually, over time, brush the enamel away and brush the hard tissues away. So a way to get around that, to freshen up the mouth and, and um, toughen up the teeth again is to use a fluoride mouth rinse. Um, and, and they do a very nice mild one. Um, I don't know if anybody's tried something like a Listerine recently and it just blows your head off um, because of the essential oils in there. Um, that would be completely inappropriate for somebody with a dry mouth. So I find that there's much milder, nicer, kinder versions to be had. Um, and then just, I, I wanted to put this in here, um, but with a little caveat, if you're going to utilize something like this, please seek some advice about it first, just to make sure you're using it properly. So these are bite blocks. So for um, family members who are struggling to keep their mouth open for, for you to um, adequately clean their mouth, because, you know, it is, it's, um, it's a long time 
you know, for somebody like me where their mouth barely shuts because I'm talking all the time, it's fine. But for other people, they find it really difficult to keep their mouth open for the length of time. Two minutes is a long time when you're waiting for something to be over. Um, so these bite blocks can be introduced. So all they do is they just sit comfortably between the teeth. It looks in this picture like it's um, wedging the mouth open. It's not. It's just resting between the teeth. So that's what I mean by get some advice. You don't want to wedge it to the back. You just want to, to um, wedge it open just enough um, so that they can rest their teeth on there and you can get the toothbrush onto the inside surfaces here. Um, you, you, the other reason you want to get advice on how to use the, the specific ones you've got is if you can see on these ones, they've got very helpful little loops on the ends like here. Um, and I would tend to um, put a little bit of floss or thread, something or, or sometimes you can get little chains that they come with as well. Something so that if this does fall to the back of the mouth, there's no risk of choke. You can fish it out really quickly with those threads then. Um, but it is another option to help you access the mouth to have that adequate, um, um, you know, oral hygiene. Um, and then just to say these are really good little resources for getting um, some more inf useful information. It'd be really nice if I could cover everything today, but I, you're probably going to have other questions and, and, and I'm not going to be here all the time. You're more than happy to email me um, about anything as well. But um, yeah, if you if you want some quick resources, the Oral Health Foundation have got a fantastic website. Um, they've got the A to Z of oral health information and it'll have everything under the sun there. Um, it's got um, leaflets that you can order um, if anybody would working for the charity wants any leaflets they will send anything out but there's also you know resources online that you can use there and then as well that or leave company they have a fantastic little quiz on there for you to decide um you know what um um what products would be best for you um, so you can, you know, put in the symptoms, how often you're getting a dry mouth and how long it's persisting for and things. And they will let you know which products would be more suitable for you. Because, again, these things are, can be quite expensive. Um, so, it, you know, by the time if you're buying things and they're not working, it can be very frustrating. So something like this can, can really help with that. Um, and then Colgate have their own um, educational um uh, website as well and again very similar to the oral health foundation this is um an independent obviously colgate is a is a big conglomerate so um you know the information here you would have to sort of weigh up um they'll be promoting themselves quite a bit there and um, that's the only thing the information tends to be quite correct um but um they just tend to say that there's no better um toothpaste than their one or no better um, mouthwash than their one so you just have to, to to turn a blind eye to that but the advice is quite good so thank you for giving your time to listen to me today